In 2017, the Minnesota Vikings drafted Pat Elfline in the third round, and he was drafted as a left tackle el- left tackle out of the Ohio State and has started as left tackle started as center left guard and this year is our starting right guard now of course he is injured right now and has had a bad career so far I mean his rookie season was great he had an amazing rookie season an all right second year but last year in 2019 he fell off a lot and he is terrible now and he is our starting right guard and now of course he only started one game so far after going out I think he went out with the injury in practice after that and then we saw Drew Samia step in of course Drew Samia even looked worse than Pat Elfline Drew Samia doesn't even look like he should be in the NFL but of course it is only his second year and you don't expect a whole lot from a, your second uh, your your second string right guard. Of course, Pat Elfline is our starting right guard right now and is, ender, and is ending his rookie season with the Minnesota Vikings. His rookie, um, not his rookie season, his rookie contract with the Minnesota Vikings and is valued very low. What should the Minnesota Vikings do with Pat Elfline? Now, drafting a guard in the third round is exactly where you want to take guards in the NFL draft. When you draft guards in the third round, you can obviously take them as left tackles like we saw with Pat Elfline and move them to the left guard or right guard position. Position. Now we saw Ezra Cleveland step in and Ezra Cleveland is by far better than Pat Elfline. If you're judging Pat Elfline off of last season and Ezra Cleveland off of only three starts in the NFL, you want to use Ezra Cleveland over Pat Elfline. With that being said, Ezra, Ezra Cleveland is built like a left tackle and he is a left tackle. He was, he came, he was our, uh, he's a rookie right now was drafted in the second round out of Boise state and was drafted to be our left tackle. Now, of course, Riley reef is playing amazing this season and there's no reason to bench Riley reef and play Ezra Cleveland over him in practice. They gave Ezra Cleveland some snaps, as we saw Drew Samia being one of the probably the worst offensive linemen, starting offensive linemen in the entire NFL. Drew Samia looked awful. He looked like a practice squad, guy, a practice squad guy. And as a matter of fact, he didn't even look like he should be in the NFL. Now, Drew Samia is terrible. If you're judging Drew Samia compared to Pat Elfline, Pat Elfline is by far better. Now, Pat Elfline is valued very low as he did have an awful 2019 season. Pat Elfline got an insane amount of fouls and awful he did terrible now of course pat elfline is loved by the team now rick spielman loves pat elfline i don't know why but rick spielman does love pat elfline i have been very low on pat elfline i have not liked pat elfline at all but this episode this segment of this episode we will be talking about pat elfline and i'm gonna say they should give pat elfline another contract the reason why is because this offseason for the Minnesota Vikings is going to be completely different from the last five offseasons. I have been saying this Vikings offensive line this year is elite. This Vikings offensive line this year is great. Now, I said this a few weeks ago and everyone disagreed with me. I'm saying this now and people are starting to understand like, yes, this offensive line has been playing very well this season. Now, take away the right guard position at all. Pat Elfline, first game first game, did not look great at right guard. Drew Samia looked awful at right guard. Ezra Cleveland has stepped in and now started three games in the NFL and has looked great at right guard. I want I am excited to see where Ezra Cleveland can go with his career. Of course, he is a left tackle and he's built like a left tackle. That's his position. Although the Minnesota Vikings are gonna have to move on from Riley Reef. As you see all these players departing from the Minnesota Vikings, because we are gonna be moving to a new quarterback. Now, Kirk Cousins, of course, he will probably be our quarterback for the next two seasons. Now, of course, as Kirk Cousins is going to be our quarterback. They are going to be playing to win. They're going to be shooting for a Super Bowl. With that being said, the Minnesota Vikings cannot compete with Kirk Cousins under center. Dalvin Cook is looking amazing. Now you look at the ingredients for Dalvin Cook. He is put in a place to succeed. This Vikings offensive line is the main reason Vikings offensive line and CJ Ham and that tight end duo is the reason why Dalvin Cook is going untouched on these 70 yard runs. Dalvin Cook is looking amazing. And he's going untouched because this Vikings offensive line is playing so well right now. Now, of course, Ezra Cleveland looks fine at right guard. Of course, they drafted him as a, to, as a left tackle to be a left tackle. So I do think Ezra Cleveland will be our starting left tackle going forward. And I think that they're going to have to move on from Riley Reef. Now, Riley Reef, I thought last season they were going to have to cut his contract because of what we're seeing with these players. I mean, you're paying Dalvin Cook this much. You traded for Yannick Ngakwe. Now, of course, we, we aren't with his contract right now. You traded for Yannick Ngakwe. You got Kirk Cousins still under $33 million a year for fully guaranteed you gotta cut some guys and that's why I thought that the Minnesota Vikings should have cut Samar Stefan I thought they should have cut Riley Reef. now Riley Reef is playing amazing this year and I love to see it but both Riley Reef and Dakota Dozier you got to move on from them. You need replacements for these guys. Now, we have Riley Reese's replacement already in Ezra Cleveland and Ezra Cleveland looking fine at right guard. One thing what you see with Pat Elfline 
And I think the Vikings should give Pat Elfline another contract. Now, you guys will disagree with me. Now, Pat Elfline had an awful 2019 season. There is no debate there. Pat Elfline played awful in 2019. You see this thing with, with offensive linemen like we're seeing with Riley Reef this year. Like we're seeing with Dakota Dozier. Now, Garrett Bradbury, of course, he's coming off of a rookie season. You kind of wanted to see this. You see players go from the worst offensive lineman to one of the best in one season. Offensive lineman is such an interesting position in players can go from one of the worst and all of a sudden look like one of the best. I don't know his name right now, but he is a guard for the Denver Broncos and was easily one of the worst off starting offensive linemen in the entire league last year. He looked awful, worse than Pat Elfline. You think Pat Elfline is bad? I don't know his name right now. I'm sorry, I, I can't I can't quote his name, but he played for the Denver Broncos and now is a top three ranked offensive lineman by PFF. Players can go from one of the worst to one of the best in one season at offensive line. And this is something we can see with Pat Elfline because he has showed promise. Now, of course, in 2019, Pat Elfline played awful. He got holding fouls on just about every game and was allowed way too many quarterback pressures. Pat Elfline did awful in 2019. But the reason why they should give him another contract is because the Vikings can't compete with Kirk Cousins. And if you give Pat Elfline just another two-year contract, enough to uh, for him to prove himself, you could be looking at an amazing future for this guy. Of course, he can look awful these two years. Fine, you're going to bench him. Because Pat Elfline right now is valued so low to the point where they don't have to pay him a whole lot of money. They can start him and draft someone who can take his place. The Vikings need to give Pat Elfline another contract. Now, Pat Elfline, I don't know if he will be our starting right guard next year or our starting left guard. Thing is, the Vikings can't be looking at offensive linemen this offseason as much as they have years prior because we have an amazing offensive line right now. We even have a lot of depth pieces. I mean, Brett Jones is a great piece for depth. Rashad Hill is a great piece that you can move in, that you can rotate in step in for when players get injured. We have a lot of depth pieces already, and we don't need to focus on offensive line as much as the Vikings have had to in the last three years, when of course the offensive line was far worse than it is right now. Now, Riley Reef, I think we are stuck with Riley Reef for another year or two, which is totally fine. I mean, you don't, you can trade Riley Reef too. You can trade Reef. You can cut Reef. I don't think keeping Riley Reef would be a smart decision because like I've said with other players on the Minnesota Vikings, by the time the Vikings can compete for a Super Bowl, by the time the Vikings will have a new quarterback, under center and that they can compete for a Super Bowl, these players will be done. Riley Reef, I do think right now is 32 years old. By the time the Vikings are going to rebuild, of course, being a rebuild going from how the Vikings are right now to being a Super Bowl contender is going to take at least three years. It's going to take at least three years for the Vikings to completely change things around. And by that time, Riley Reef is not going to be playing how he is right now. You know who could be? Pat Elfline. Pat Elfline is only 26 right now and is coming off of his rookie contract and the Vikings can pay him. He is an un unrestricted free agent in 2021 and that's when the Vikings can pay him. Now, Ezra Cleveland is looking right, great at right guard. We don't want him to stay at right guard. I am happy to see how he's playing. He can, of course, be our backup right guard. He can, of course, play these other positions. But Dakota Dozier is our starting left guard who is looking fine this year. Riley Reeves, starting left tackle, looking great this year. These are players you're going to have to move on from because the Vikings have a great young core starting offensive lineman right now. With Ezra Cleveland, of course, our rookie. With Brian O'Neill, who has been great his entire career. Garrett Bradbury making a huge step up. Outside of that, you are just stuck at the guard position. If you start Pat Elfline another one year, maybe just to prove himself or even use him as a backup, you are set because that guard position is not as hard to fill as these tackles positions, which we have set in the center position. Vikings have a young core offensive line. And of course, three years ago, the Vikings had the worst offensive lineman, uh, offensive line in the league. Now the Vikings are looking like in a few years, we will have the best offensive line in the league. Because if you can get these young guys, now Pat Elfline will be 26 years old, and he will be your oldest guy on the offensive line at only 26. So by the time the Vikings can rebuild, now offensive linemen typically play until they're 34, until they're about that old. When the when we get a new quarterback, if when the Vikings tend to get a new quarterback, which I don't know if they are going to get a new franchise guy this offseason, because I don't think the Vikings will be able to trade up to get someone who's good enough to good enough to be our next franchise guy. I hope they can, but I don't think it will happen because of how Rick Spielman has drafted in the past. When the Vikings get a new quarterback and we have a great of an offensive line as we are supposed to be, as I am saying that the Vikings offensive line will be great in about three years when they build all this chemistry and when they get these young guys who can develop together, this quarterback is going to be put in a perfect place to succeed with Irv Smith still being here. 
With Dalvin Cook, I don't know what's going to happen with Dalvin Cook in a few years, but he will probably still be here too. Irv Smith is showing a lot of promise. Justin Jefferson is showing a ton of promise. And then, of course, we have CJ Ham. We have all these young offensive line. When we get that quarterback who is more mobile than Kirk, who can pass better than Kirk, who is better at playmaking than Kirk, who can make better decisions, we can compete for a Super Bowl. Because, of course, the quarterback is the hardest position to fill. But if we can, if somehow the Vikings can hit on a quarterback, which we haven't since Teddy Bridgewater and before that, what, Dante Culpepper, the Vikings are not going to grab another free agent quarterback because it hasn't worked for us in the last 10 years. Vikings are going to get a new quarterback, draft someone possibly first round this year or the next year. There's a lot of quarterbacks that can be drafted in the first round this year, but you're probably going to have to trade up into the top 10 to get one of them. And I don't think the Vikings are going to do that unless if they do move on from Mike Zimmer and are tending to move on from, uh, from Kirk Cousins. We would have to see an awful rest of the season is what I'm trying to say here. If we can get that, this quarterback will be put in a place to succeed, and you won't have to pay him $33 million to accept sacks and throw interceptions. You can have this guy, and Vikings can compete for a Super Bowl if they give Pat Elfline this another contract because Pat Elfline can go somewhere else and look amazing. He can. He showed a lot of promise. I know he had an awful 2019 season. You give him another contract, and he can start at right guard. You, show, you give him a chance to prove himself. He is still young. He's only 26. He's coming off of his rookie contract. He is not very valued. He is not valued high at all. You can give him another contract. Start him, of course. I don't want to see Drew Samia starting at right guard. I don't want to see Ezra Cleveland starting at right guard. I know he's looking great. I want to see him at left tackle because that's the position he plays. That's the position he's built for or even left guard. Now, Vikings in the third round can be looking for a new left guard also. Vikings can compete for a Super Bowl. And giving Pat Elfline another contract is worth a shot. Now, of course, Pat Elfland can look awful the next two years. Who cares? You're not going to have to pay him a whole lot of money. Yeah, he's probably going to get paid more than his rookie contract. You're not going to have to pay Pat Elfland a lot of money. He's going to get paid enough to be a backup, but he's going to be starting. Pat Elfland's going to look great. I do. I have high hopes for Pat Elfland. He showed a lot of promise. We have seen with many offensive linemen in the past them go from being awful from a terrible season to being a star the next season. We can see this with Pat Elfline, and that's why I think the Vikings should give him another contract. Now, of course, he won't play this 2020 season, which is totally fine. We have the offensive line looks fine. We don't need Pat Elfline out there, but I would like to see Pat Elfline in the 2021 season prove himself. Because as this Vikings offensive line builds chemistry and as we have these young guys who are developing together and building chemistry, we can be a great team in the future. We can be a Super Bowl contender. Now, of course, as long as Kirk Cousins is under center, we cannot but you get his replacement. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to find, but if the Vikings can get a replacement, we will be a Super Bowl contender. Let me know what y'all think.